Okay, so I'm going to give a brief introduction to the theory of distributions. Okay, so I will tell you shortly what I'm going to do. Okay, so let me just start. Okay, there are. So is it visible my writing? Yes, sir. Okay. So there are many situations. many situations where we need to we need to generalize generalize the concept of concept of derivative So we all in our undergraduate class, we all learned the derivative of a function and there are many functions which are uh, not differentiable. Okay. And one of the standard example or a first example, what one sees is something like f of x is equal to mod x. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that there is a need in many contexts, especially in the study of differential equations to introduce a con the concept of uh, a generalized notion of derivative, okay? That means you somehow want to make sense of a derivative even when it is not differential, okay? So I will give you a, with some examples and just to tell you that, just to indicate some more simple situations where these things are required, okay? So I'm going to start with a very simple partial differential equations. I will write it and what is known as the transport equation. Transport equation. So the equation that I wanted to study is ut at x comma t plus c times u at x t this is equal to zero and you need u at x zero is equal to summing for x okay here x is in r t is in r okay and here also x is in r so this is the partial differential equation okay so later on, I will, uh, you will see why it is called the transport equation, okay? So, okay, this is C times Ux, okay, sorry. This is uh, equation is Ut plus C times Ux, this is equal to zero. You can see this uh, T, the T variable as the time, okay? And X is kind of a space variable. So you have a function defined on the, on two variables X and T and then you want to find a solution of this equation, okay? And what is given is that, so let me draw a graph uh, or the picture. Suppose this is my x-axis and this is my time axis, okay? It is given that the function u has to be equal to u x zero, at time t equal to zero, this is going to be f of x. That means on this axis, it has to be f x. And then you have to define the function here, okay, as the for positive time, so that it satisfies this equation ut at xt plus c times uc ux at xt is equal to zero. Here ut I mean the partial derivative of u with respect to t, and ux I mean the partial derivative of u with respect to x. Or in other words, you wanted to find a solution of this differential equation with a condition at time t equal to zero, you call it as an initial condition. Initial condition is given, okay? So this is what we want. So generally, what is a solution? So what is a solution? Okay. So solution means, first of all, you should be, we should be able to differentiate u, okay? And then it should satisfy these kind of things. Okay, so solution, 
solution is a u defined find on say r cross r cross r such that the partial derivatives ut and ux exist and it satisfies and it satisfies satisfies the partial differential equation or simply it is the pd so partial derivative ut should exist partial derivative ux should exist and it should satisfy this equation and and tan t equal to zero it also should satisfy this equation okay so let me just try to solve this equation okay so it's not very complicated and of course there's a detailed theory of how you solve these kind of equations but let me just uh, take a, uh, say, so a simple approach and then i try to show you how to solve these kind of an, uh, or how to get a solution for this equation okay so my equation here is this ut at xt plus ux at xt this has to be equal to zero and also you have u at x zero is equal to fx now let me take this plane this is my x and this is my t okay now let me start some space here okay yeah uh, maybe for simplicity let me take c is equal to 1 or uh, let me take c is equal to 1 for example for simplicity okay then let us take a line passing through this point. So let me call this as a point x naught zero. Okay. It's an arbitrary point on the, this x axis. And let me take a line which passes through this with a slope one. Okay. So then this equation, the coordinates of this equation, you can parameterize this line in the form. This line can be this line. can be parameterized parameterized as so i take a variable s i can write it as the s coordinate is going to be x naught plus s and s where s is in r okay. so you can see that when s is equal to zero it is the point x naught zero and as s becomes positive it travels in this line and when s is negative it goes in this direction Okay. So that is the uh, equation of the, uh, the parameterized form of this line which is passing through this. Okay. Now, once you have this kind of a uh, thing, so what I'm going to assume is that, so assume, assume the problem has a solution. Assume the PDE has a, PDE has a solution. Has a solution. That means there exists a function u which satisfies these conditions. Okay. Now what I will do is that I am going to restrict this u to this line, or in other words, I am going to define 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 this line is parameterized by the s variable. I am going to define g of s is equal to the value of the function u on that line. The line is x naught plus s and s so this i can define for s in r okay then let me just try to find what is going to be g prime of s differentiated so when you differentiate this then you will get this is going to be ux at x naught plus s s then plus it is going to be ut at x naught plus s s okay so I have assumed that in the equation c is equal to 1 and ut plus ux is going to be 0. Okay, So that will imply that this is going to be equal to 0. This implies that g of s is going to be, is a, is a constant. It's a constant. Therefore, in particular, what I will say to get is that g at s is going to be g at 0. 
Okay. Now let us see what is G at S. G at S is this implies that U at X naught plus S. Yes, is nothing but U at X naught zero. Now you look at the picture again. So this is my X and this is my D plane. And I have a point X naught zero here. And I have this line passing through this. What I found is that U is going to be a constant along this line if there is a solution. Okay. And therefore, the values at the point here, here we know that u is going to be equal to f. So I will get that. So u of x0 plus s and s, this is going to be is equal to f of x0. So if u is a solution, this has to be the size. Okay. Now I can put x0 plus s is equal to x and s is equal to t. And you can try to solve and then you will see this implies that u at xt has to be equal to f of x minus t. What you do is that you start with an xt, you, you try to equate xt is equal to x0 plus s, s and then you will see that x, x is going to be, the, your, uh, x0 is going to be x minus t and s is going to be t. So you will get this kind of a thing. And in the same, in using the same strategy in general, in general, if uh, your equation is this, ut plus c times ux is equal to zero and u at x zero is equal to f of x, okay? This is the equation I started with. Then you can show that using the same approach, if, u is a solution if u is a solution then u has to be of the form uxt has to be equal to f of x minus t okay so what we are seeing is that this solution problem if there is a solution it has to be this okay that is the question if there is a solution if it has to be now the question is, what about, the, most of the time the question is, F will be given, can you solve this problem? Okay, so the question is, so you can also say that therefore conversely, conversely, so suppose I define uxt is equal to f of x minus t, then it is going to be a solution. If you want to be a solution, you should be able to differentiate u. Okay, so that means I should be able to differentiate f. Conversely, if f is, differentiable differentiable then u of xt is equal to f of x minus t is a solution solution sorry this is u of xt is x minus ct here okay x minus ct ct is a solution of the PD, which I have given. PD. Okay. So here, so, so I need F is differentiable. Okay. If F is differentiable, then I can solve this equation like this. Okay. Now let me try just try to understand this equation a little better. Let us look at how this solution. What is the nature of this solution? This is my x-axis and this is the time axis at time t equal to zero suppose uh, t equal to zero suppose my fx looks like this suppose my fx is something else. suppose this is the graph of f okay and then this is the this is how u at x zero looks like okay then as the time progresses say take time t equal to one how this solution will become. So u at x1, that is going to be equal to, you have a formula, it is at f of x minus c. Okay, assume for example, c is positive, then how does this picture of u x1 looks like? Let me draw it here itself. You see, suppose this is zero. So as x minus c, this means suppose the c is somewhere here. Then what happens is that this profile would have just shifted 
they like this. Okay. Or in general, what happens is that suppose your uh, picture is f is like this. At time t, this picture will be going like at a, so u tank t t. This picture will be just shifting like this. Okay. And as t increases, it goes like this. So you can see that you have an initial profile like this and it is traveling in this direction okay as time progresses and the speed at which it is traveling is this c okay so what i'm trying to say is that this that is why it is called the transport equation okay so this equation what actually it does is you have an initial profile f here and it is traveling with a velocity c Okay. If C is positive, it goes in this direction. If C is negative, that profile will travel in this direction. Okay. So this partial differential equation actually represents a transport phenomenon. Okay. This is in the simple case. Even if you are in a two-dimension or three-dimension, there are equivalent equations and equivalent formulas. So what I wanted to say is that this actually represents some kind of a transport phenomenon. Okay. Now, what is the solution we have? The solution we have is u at xt, xt is equal to f of x minus ct. Okay. And if f is differentiable, f is differentiable, differentiable, then u is a solution of this equation in our classical sense. But when you look at it from a very physical or geometrical point of view, even if it's not differentiable, this transport phenomenon still makes sense, right? For example, suppose my F is something like here, some kind of a sharp edge, something like this, okay? And then still this profile also can travel. Maybe let me take some simple one. Suppose this is my F, okay? Then still, suppose this is my F, then F of X minus CT, this can be like after some time it can be like this it can be like this and so on okay so this the underlying phenomenon be, behind this equation that transport that to make sense of that you don't require the functions to be differentiable right because this transport you know, even if there is a sharp edge the function won't be differentiable but still this profile can uh, travel like this but then how do you interpret this as a solution of the equation when f is not differentiated? So the question is, question what I'm asking is, suppose, suppose f is not differentiable, not differentiable. Uh, say, let's say, say it is only continuous, only continuous, continuous. Okay. Then the question is, question is, can we somehow, somehow interpret, interpret u of xt, which I define as f of x minus ct, ct as a solution of the PDE, PDE ut plus cux is equal to 0 with uh, u at x 0 is equal to f of x. Okay. So this is the question that uh, I'm asking. So, so you can see that I have already encountered a function u. When f is only continuous, u can only be continuous. Then still, can you interpret this kind of a function as a solution of this differential equation? That you cannot do it in the classical sense because I'm assuming f only to be continuous. So u is only continuous a priori. And then there is no way you can use your classical way to define this as a solution. Okay. So this is one way, one is instance, I'm showing you that there is a natural physical phenomenon and our existing mathematics or the definition of derivative that is not enough to interpret as a solution. Okay, so 
shows that you maybe you may have to interpret the differentiation in a different way and which is somewhat meaningful okay that is one thing and i will give you another example of another equation so which i'm not going to give the details so there is another equation called the burgers equation which is something like ut plus u ux is equal to zero okay and u at sorry u at x zero this is going to be some f of x okay and you can show that this kind of an equation this is a nonlinear equation and for example even when f is smooth for there are certain f for which solution will exist for initially for some time here after some time the solution won't exist in the classical sense okay and sometimes the solutions will start developing becoming discontinuous and so on and uh, and again these equations are coming from fluid dynamics and so on or and uh, there are there are phenomena like shock waves and so on there uh, the solutions are not continuous again so again for these kind of equations we have to interpret functions which are not differentiable or not even continuous as solutions of differential equations okay so these are some of the simple since instances i'm giving you that there is a need to find introduce a notion of generalized derivative of functions okay and then uh, how do we do that okay so so these examples suggest suggest that there is a need there is a need to introduce introduce a generalized generalized notion of derivative derivative so that means we may have to generalize the functions uh, to more general objects and then you have to correspondingly uh, generalize the notion of derivatives so in the new sense even some functions which are like mod x which are not differentiable it, uh, it is differentiable in the in a general sense okay so this is our aim. okay so before going further let me just make some um, observations okay so so far we have been dealing with functions Okay, so far we are dealing with dealing with functions functions okay which basically give point wise informations okay which give point wise information point wise information okay i'll explain what i mean by that but in practice but in practice uh, this is not very useful in general so i will tell you what exactly i mean by this Okay. So what is a function? So you have a function from an interval a, b to r. Okay. So what it tells you that at any point x here, you have a value f of x. Okay. That is what I mean by it is giving the information at each point. Okay. So let me take a very practical situation. Suppose I have a rod here, some a, b. Okay. And I'm going to give you its temperature at a point. So this f is going here. Okay. So f of x uh, at a point x here, and f of x is going to be the temperature at a point. Temperature at x. So the function f gives the temperature at every point on the in, uh, on the rod, which is written as a b. But the point here is that in practice, you can use a thermometer 
and you try to find what is f of x. That means the temperature at a point x. Okay. But when you put a temperature here, or a thermometer here, you see, point is only a mathematical concept. Okay. So it never has, it, it has a, it doesn't have any area. But a thermometer, however sharp its edge or the point, what thermometer is going to do is that in a small area, it is going to give you a temperature. If I am trying to put the temperature here, it is going to be in a small neighborhood it is going to measure. Because it is practically it is impossible to have a point as a that uh, edge of the thermometer, right? If whatever, however small it is, it is going to have an area. So when you are measuring the temperature, okay, at each point you will say, but what actually you get is what you are getting is some information uh, on a, and an average kind of and an average temperature in a very small in a region. That's what exactly what you are getting. Okay, so this example shows that in practice, for getting point-wise informations are not that easy. What you have is information in a very small neighborhood, and that neighborhood may be very small. Okay, and similarly, there are in physics there are other concepts like. Uh, for example, force acting at a point. Force acting at a point. Okay. So what is it called? Momentum. So this is a concept, it's a large force acting at a point. Okay. So that means, but you, you are just having one now, force acting at a point. Again, point is a mathematical concept, so you cannot have a force acting at one point. Okay, so if you want to find the total force and things like that, if you if you have uh, just this means you have a, some large number at only at one point, it is zero everywhere. So the total force means if you integrate this, and that will be zero because if you integrate a function which is non-zero only at one point, then the integral is going to be zero. Okay. So, but in physics, there are these concepts, force acting at a point. But in mathematics, it doesn't make sense because when you integrate a function which is non-zero only at one point, you will get it integral zero. Okay. But in physicists have their own way of interpreting it. So this was giving some kind of a disparity again. Okay. So what what happens is that uh, at a point, well, again, it is not phys uh, physically it's possible. So what you are having is probably acting in a force acting on a very small region. That region could be very small. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is that something which is more practical is instead of talking about f of x, probably some what you should look for is some information, the average of f in neighborhoods or thing, uh, in, in an interval and so on. Okay. So that is basically the key point when you are trying to generalize this notion of functions okay, to what are known as distributions. Okay? So whatever I am talking about right now, and I will try to generalize it and trying to put it in a mathematical context. Okay? So let me just uh, try to introduce, put it in a more general framework. And for that, first I have to interpret the functions using some of these kind of tools. Okay, so first I need uh, something like um, so. Let me let a b be an interval interval in R. Okay, I'm going to take this objects what is known as C infinity functions with compact support in AB. Okay. So what are these functions? C infinity functions. So these are these are basically functions. So this is nothing but all functions from AB to R. AB to R such that f is equal to f is infinitely differentiable infinitely differentiable differentiable and f of x is equal to zero for all x uh, for all x maybe for all x 
in so i will write it as some c comma d complement where this closed interval c d is a subset of a b okay this c d can vary okay uh, so what i wanted to say is that this is the interval a b a b so c infinity function with compact support that is what is it called it consists of all functions which are infinitely differentiable and it will be something like this okay here okay. or it can be something like this is my ab it can be something like this okay so in some neighborhood around a and in some neighborhood around b it has going to be zero okay so the function is zero near the boundary points a and b and the function has to be c infinity this is roughly the picture of this c infinity function with a b so you may wonder whether there are such functions for example i can always construct such functions i will give you an interval here i will take an interval a and b i will put another point c and d c and d here then i can take a function phi of x is equal to e to the power 1 by x minus c into x minus d okay this is when x is in the interval c d and you can put it as zero when x is not in c d okay so this is going to be a function something like this and then from here onwards you can okay so you can vary c and d and uh, you can get infinitely many functions which like this okay so these are the objects i wanted to play with this is this is c infinity function with compact support okay now why why have I introduced this function so next the question which i wanted to say is that let f from an interval a b to r be continuous be a continuous function so my question is when is f0 so you may think that this is a very stupid question what i am asking you all of us know f is 0 if and only if fx is equal to 0 for all x okay so I want to get this information in a different way. Okay. So the first, that is the first theorem I will write. Theorem. Okay. F is zero if and only if and only for integral from A to B f of x into f of x dx. This is equal to zero for all phi in cc infinity of this ab these are the introduced quantities which i introduced before okay so f is zero suppose f is zero then you multiply anything with any phi with f that will be zero this will be zero okay so proof is if f is zero this implies f into phi is zero this implies its integral of f into v is zero. Okay. Now the converse is the important part. Conversely, conversely, suppose, suppose integral from a to b f of x into v of x dx. This is going to be equal to zero. For, for all phi element of cc infinity okay. then i want to claim is that my claim is claim is that f is going to be equal to zero how do i do that i will assume that so let's suppose not suppose not okay then this implies that there exists an x naught such that f of x naught is not equal to zero. So let's assume 
assume f of x naught is positive. Okay. Now I have an interval here a b and b and I have a point x naught such that f of x naught is somewhere here it is positive. Okay. Now the function is continuous and at f of x naught is positive. So you can find a small neighborhood here c and d. Okay. Such that where f is positive. Okay. So this implies that f of x is positive for all x in some x naught minus epsilon and x naught plus epsilon. A continuous function is positive at some point, then in a small neighborhood it has to be positive. Okay. Now what I will do is that I will take let phi is in a CC function, infinity function with compact support in the interval x naught minus epsilon and x naught plus epsilon. Okay. I, I construct a phi which is supported here. Okay. Then integral over f into phi. Since phi varies outside, you will get that this is going to be integral of x naught minus epsilon to x naught plus epsilon f into phi. Okay. And in, in x naught minus epsilon and x naught plus epsilon, the function f into phi is strictly positive. Okay. Therefore, this integral has to be strictly positive. A positive function, the integral has to be positive. Okay. So, so this is not, so therefore it's a contradiction and therefore that proves the theorem. Okay. So what I have shown here is that a function f is equal to zero, saying that it is equivalent to zero, that is equivalent to saying that integral from a to b f into phi equal to zero for all phi in cc infinity of the interval a b okay so this gives me another thing so this implies i can write it another way i take two functions let f comma g be two functions from a b to r to r continuous okay then f is equal to g if and only if integral over from a to b f into phi is equal to integral from a to b g into phi for all phi that is cc infinity function okay so that this is basically f is equal to g if and only if f minus g is zero now f minus g is zero if and only if f minus g integral of f minus g into phi is zero and that becomes like this okay so to say that two functions f is equal to g and that is equivalent to saying that integral from a to b f into phi is the same as integral from a to b g into phi for all c infinity function with compact support phi okay so that is the thing what i am saying so i have found another way of distinguishing the functions two distinct function f and g and is saying, saying f is not equal to g and that is equivalent to saying that there exists some phi such that integral of f into phi is not equal to integral of g into phi okay so this gives me a thing now what are these objects okay so we are defining for phi we are defining integral from a to b f into phi okay I, I will give it a name for this. I will define define something called a lambda f from C C infinity of A B to R by lambda f of phi that is going to be equal to integral from A to B f x into phi of x dx okay that means given a function f i define a function lambda f from c c infinity of a b to r okay so then you can 
very easily check that okay cc infinity of ab first of all this is going to be a vector space it's a vector space okay and lambda f from cc infinity of ab to r is linear okay so what i have done is i have an f from ab to r which is given okay and correspondingly i introduce something called a lambda f which maps from cc infinity of ab to r so if f is a function from ab to r that will induce a lambda f which is a linear map from this vector space to r or say like what is known as a linear function okay so a function and our previous discussion shows that you see i have shown that here this kind of a thing in my new notation this is uh, lambda f of phi and this is lambda g of phi so the previous discussion says that okay, the previous discussion says that okay f is equal to g from a b to r if and only if lambda f is equal to lambda g as linear function okay so what i have defined is that i have this class of functions class of functions i will take it as a set okay i have another one uh, class of linear functionals linear maps from cc infinity of ab ab to r okay so what i have found is that i can find a mapping from here to here okay that means f here goes to a lambda f here okay and this map is injective okay so what i have defined achieved with this and a function f i can put it into a, i can identify with it with a larger class which is known as the linear functionals okay so or in other words from whatever discussions above instead of considering the function f i can consider lambda f they are going to be linear functionals okay there are many more linear functionals on the cc infinity of ab to r uh, excuse me sir can i interrupt you for a minute yeah sure yeah uh, sir in this uh, we have taken the class of functions so is there any yeah. uh, is this any particular class of functions or any functions uh, you see right now what i am doing is very vague right now let's just think about as continuous functions okay so is okay. it much more than that is for simplicity okay. yeah yeah it can be much more than that okay in fact you can take it to the all uh, whatever discussion i have done you can do it for what is known as the locally integrable functions okay you can do that okay so this is just for the simplicity just to reduce the technicalities maybe class of function maybe continuous functions if you want okay and that you can put it into a class of linear functionals okay so these are precisely the kind of objects we are going to talk about okay so instead of a function f i am going to consider lambda f as a generalized object okay and these are going to be the generalized functions and in fact you see if uh, this vector space like cc infinity of ab these are all infinite dimensional vector space okay and if you have learned some functional analysis you will be knowing that in infinite dimensional space you generally need to talk about some topology there to make these things continuous and so on we just in infinite dimensional space we don't talk about just linear functionals okay they are continuous and that continuity with respect to a norm or a topological vector space or whatever something like that so you need something more okay 
So with this, I think uh, so. I, now I should go to the a formal definition of what is a distribution. Okay. So I will just tell you what is a distribution is. I will just uh, define the formal definition. Just taking this as the uh, as a motivation. Okay. So definition. Definition. Distribution. Distribution. Okay. So let A B be an interval. Interval in R. It could be a finite interval or an infinite interval, doesn't matter. Be an interval in R. Then a distribution. A distribution in AB AB is a linear map, it's a linear map T from CC infinity of AB to R satisfying. Satisfying the following condition. Following condition that is for every compact set, compact set K contained in the interval AB, okay, there exists. There exist uh, a number, maybe I will call it as m element of n union 0. There is a non negative integer m and a c greater than 0 such that, such that, so you have this uh, modulus of t of v has to be less than or equal to this constant c times summation i is equal to 0 to m supremum of i can write it as the phi i okay. this has this for this holds such that this holds for all phi in uh, CC infinity of AB with support of E contained in the compact set. So let me just explain it once again. I'm let AB be an interval in R. That is what I have started with. Then a distribution in AB is a linear map T from CC infinity of AB to R. Okay. So I have already shown you examples of linear map from CC infinity of AB to R. Like for example, I take a function f, something like a lambda f, which I defined. Okay. And there may be linear maps which are more general than that. It need not be in that form. Okay. So there is a linear map T from CC infinity of AB to R satisfying the following conditions. Okay. So what is the condition? So for every compact set K, in AB, once a compact subset of AB is fixed, you will have a non-negative integer m and a positive constant c, such that this t of phi should be estimated from above by this kind of an estimate. Okay. So actually, this part of the definition, okay, that is in some sense talks about the continuity of this t with respect to certain topology and so on. Okay. So I don't have time to go into the technical other details of this topology and so on. So just understand that it's a linear functional and there is a topology which is which comes basic because we have we need some other requirements and in a quantitatively we put it like this. Okay. And so basically a 
uh, distribution is nothing but a linear functional on cc infinity of ab okay which satisfies certain estimate okay this is what is a distribution okay or what is known as you call it as a generalized function okay so i will just give you a some examples before going okay examples examples so the first example is what i have given let f is a is in is a continuous function on say a b sorry continuous function on a b okay then define define lambda f of phi is equal to integral from a to b f into phi okay this is for all phi in cc infinity of a b okay so my claim is that lambda f oh uh, sir is yeah uh, sir in the definition uh, of the right, yeah. right hand side c times summation that one uh, is that a no uh it is not exactly a norm it is going to be what is known as a semi norm okay so if it what, was what it, if it you were... see, for example when you take a space of continuous functions the natural norm is the supremum there right yeah and when you take function which are once differentiable then the natural norm is supremum of uh, function plus supremum of its derivative yeah yeah okay and if you consider c2 function that is two times differentiable then it is going to be uh, what is the supremum of f f prime and f second derivative fine okay so yeah. here i am dealing with c infinity functions on ab okay yeah but here only i am taking m derivatives okay so it is so so this is not ex exactly a norm it can be treated as a semi norm Okay, there are uh, there are such notions and so on. Okay, so that is what, and in fact, if you know some topological vector space and such things, and uh, there's a way of introducing a family of semi norms on the CC infinity, and then basically what you want to make sure that your T is continuous with respect to each of these things. Okay, so right now you just understand that on a on functions which are compactly supported on a specific compact set. the value of t f can be controlled by some finite number of derivatives but when you change the compact set that m may change okay so there there will be various things okay so i will show you some examples then it will be clear so let f is a, con a continuous function on ab define lambda f of phi is equal to integral from a to b f into phi then lambda f is a distribution okay so clearly lambda f is clearly lambda f is linear linear that is because integral of uh, uh, phi1 plus phi2 lambda f of phi1 plus phi2 is you write integral and you know that integral is additive and so on it is it just follows then we have to check whether it satisfies this condition okay so let me just do that let me fix let k subset of ab b compact compact and phi is in cc infinity such that support of phi is a subset of k then modulus of lambda f of phi lambda f is my t before this is going to be modulus of integral from a to b f into phi this can be less than or equal to integral from a to b modulus of f into modulus of phi okay now maybe this is, for example uh, yeah now this integral is actually phi has support on this k so this is basically integral over k mod f into 
mod v okay so therefore i can take this less than or equal to supremum of mod v this into integral over k mod n this i call it as c so what i got is that this is less than or equal to c into supremum of mod v okay so you can see that here what i get got is this m is equal to 0 i equal to 0 means supremum of v a constant into v okay so lambda f of v is less than or equal to a constant and supremum of v this constant actually depends on the compact set okay and here it is okay so that shows this lambda f is a distribution distribution okay so therefore i could identify any continuous function as a distribution okay and the same so in fact you see in the entire thing i only used integral of k mod f this constant this has to be a constant this can be achieved you don't need function to be continuous the only thing which i require is integral of mod f on any compact set to be finite okay these are precisely the functions which are known as locally integrable functions okay so you can say that in general in general if f is locally integrable locally integrable that is integral over k mod f is finite for any compact set for any compact k then lambda f is a distribution is a distribution okay so therefore even function which are not continuous and they are just integrable for example discontinuous functions which are integrable they all can be they are seen as some kind of a, a distribution so you could extend so this is one example and i will give you another second example what is known as the dirac distribution dirac uh, sir distribution hello uh, yes sir i have a question uh, that uh, yeah. cc infinity uh, that you said it's a vector space so yeah. uh, now here we are considering it as a non linear space right uh, so no it is not a i am not considering it as a non -linear, non linear space it is what is known as a topological vector space okay um, so uh, you have taken that uh, uh, phi uh, the sup of phi outside right so sup yeah sup norm is that working there right yeah so in the definition you can see in the definition this is the definition okay yeah. so what it says that given any compact set you should be able to find an m in this special case what we could do is that m could be taken to be zero okay and there are examples for example uh, where uh, this m could be one m could be two etc this is a simple example where you could take m to be zero okay in fact this m has a name if this m can be chosen independent of the compact set then it is what is known as the order of the distribution okay and uh, in in in, a, in that terminology you will say that you can see functions as a distributions of order zero that order means how many number of derivatives are required to control its value loosely speaking that okay so what we have seen is that for the current one this is the case okay m can be taken to be zero so now let me go to another important distribution what is known as the dirac distribution okay this is very easy to define okay dirac distribution what i'll do is that let's fix fix a point x naught in a b okay and define define the distribution is called delta x naught okay delta x naught by delta x naught this acting on phi 
This is nothing but you just evaluate the function at x naught, phi at x naught. Okay, for phi in cc infinity, wherever be it. Okay, and you can very easily check that this is again. Then you can check that check that delta x naught is a distribution. Distribution. Okay. So by abuse of terminology, sometimes in the physics textbooks and things like that, you will see what they call it, what is a delta function, okay? And in fact, for mathematicians, it doesn't make sense. So this is the way to interpret it, okay? So it should be, it's, it's called as the Dirac distribution, or is a, or is a, based at the point, it's not delta x naught, okay? So in the theory of partial differential equations and so on, this plays a very important role. This is a delta x naught. So that is another example. And if you know some measure and so on, then you can define if, if this is for people who knows what a measure is, if mu is a radon measure, radon measure, measure in A B, then I can define T of phi equal to integral from a to b phi d mu then phi is a, then t is a distribution t is a distribution okay. so what i'm trying to say is that some of the familiar obje objects like uh, functions then measures all these things can be embedded in to the class of distributions okay so there are many such things Okay. So this is the generalized object we are talking about. They are known as distribution. Now, what is the all aim we started with? We started with because functions we may not be able to differentiate. Okay, And there are partial differential equations for which you need to interpret solution for functions which are not differentiable as solutions. Okay, So here I am going to, so that means I have defined generalized functions to distributions functions may not be differentiable and now distributions i will show that a distribution there is a way of defining a its derivative okay so that's what i'm going to show you next this uh, definition definition okay so derivatives of distributions derivatives of distributions distributions okay recall recall if f is a differentiable function differentiable function then f prime is also is, is a function right so therefore, we want to define, so the class of functions, when you differentiate derivative, you want to be a function. So if you take a uh, distribution, I want to define its derivative as another distribution. Okay. So therefore, we, need, we want to define, we want to define, define the derivative the derivative of a distribution distribution as another distribution so we want to define the derivative of a distribution as another distribution so how do we do that okay again to de define a distribution, first I started from function and uh, generalized it. So what we will do is that we will again take the class of differentiable functions and then I will try to generalize this notion, okay? So just to motivate, so let us start with, let f is a c1 function. Say for simplicity, let's take r, c1 function. Then that means I have a function f, 
and I have a function f prime. F prime is f is a continuous. F prime is also continuous. Now f can be identified with a distribution called lambda f. This f prime also can be identified with a distribution lambda f prime. Okay. Now the question is, how is is lambda f dash and lambda f are related? Okay. So I'm going to do that. Okay. So I'm going to lambda, these are two linear functions. Lambda f dash is a linear functional, lambda f is a linear functional. So my what I want to understand is how these linear functionals are related. Okay. So for that, let me take let phi element of C C infinity of R. Okay. Then lambda f dash of phi. This is going to be integral from a to b f into phi dash. Okay. Sorry, f prime into f prime into phi. F prime into phi. Now I want to connect this with the lambda f. Lambda f is nothing but f into something. So that means this I have to remove this derivative from f. Okay. So how do I do that? I do the integration by parts. When I do the integration by parts, I will get this is going to minus integral from a to b f into phi prime. Okay. Or in other words, what I get is minus this is nothing but lambda f of phi prime. Okay. So what I what I see is that minus lambda f of free prime so this this that that implies that lambda f prime of phi is going to be minus lambda f of phi dash okay so this is the relation between both so what is you will take the distribution defined by f prime that is nothing but that derivative you can just put it push it into the derivative of phi Okay, fees are infinitely differentiable, therefore it can be done. Okay, similarly, suppose you take f is suppose f is uh, c two that is twice differentiable, then you can see that lambda f prime or double prime of phi. First, you apply the first formula, then you will get minus lambda of one derivative you remove, then that derivative will come here. You apply now again the previous formula, so you will get minus of minus that will be plus. So you will get lambda f of phi second derivative. Okay. In general, if you will get that if f is ck k times differentiable, lambda this k the derivative of f of phi is going to be minus one to the power k lambda f of phi k. So the distribution defined by the fk can be basically defined with f. This motivates us to define definition. Let t be a distribution. Let t be a distribution on in AB and K is a, so and n is a natural number. We define. We define. So the d that is the nth derivative as the distribution as the as the distribution given by this is the distribution given by so this has to be a so d n t divided by d dx to the body okay this acting on phi 
that is nothing but minus 1 to the power n. What is the order of the derivative that you will put out? Then t of t of the nth derivative of t. This is the definition. Okay. You can check that and remark. So the dn t by dx to the power n is a distribution in the sense that it satisfies all the conditions what we have uh, defined is a is a distribution. Uh, sir, I have a question. Yeah. Uh, that you have given is it just for a sake of notation you have given d uh, d n x raised to, uh, d x raised to n or yeah just as a notation just a notation right yeah yeah okay yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. so just as a notation you if you want some you can put some d n or something like that okay so because this is a notation most most time uh, you are familiar with right so there is no x here okay but I just used as a notation. So these uh, things can so one more thing. yeah. Uh, yeah. So normally we say derivative with respect to something, right? Yeah, but here it is not with respect to the so it is in a generalized sense, right? Of course, x is there in the functions. Uh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. So the you cannot say that with respect to some variable, but it is in a more general sense. So by this, what do exactly I mean, what exactly it says? Yeah. So I, I, I will I will come back to it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so this way you can define. So this way, what I'm trying to say is that okay. So the remark is that remark. We can. We can define. So the, therefore, the distributions are. the distributions are, are infinitely differentiable, infinitely differentiable, differentiable, okay. So therefore, one advantage is, so this I, I have been talking about everything in the one variable just for simplicity, okay. So I will just tell you that another remark is that, remark that we can, yeah, so therefore, uh, yeah, remark maybe. Mark. Let omega be a subset of R n. Okay, then we can we can define define a distribution on omega distribution in omega as a linear map, linear map t from cc infinity of omega to r, okay, which satisfies, which satisfies an estimate like what we have given before. Okay, I'm not going to the technical details. Uh, where was the definition? Yeah, we have sigma for every compact set, there is a number and things like that. There is a similar estimate. Okay. So definition, I just stick to an interval just for simplicity. And uh, there uh, and it can be generalized to any n variables. Okay. Okay. So now let me just uh, give you an uh, you are asking, you did this, and then what is the use? That's basically the question, right? Okay. So let me just take an uh, differential equations. Okay. So distributions, distributions can be seen as solutions of solutions of differential equations. Differential equations. Okay. Since I defined in one variable, I gave I will give you an ordinary differential equation. Okay. Okay. So let's consider consider the ODE. Let's take an ordinary differential equation. So something like uh, 
so what do we uh, so so what is your notation of order, second order differential equation for example okay so how do you write it so what is your standard notation for ode two variable so let me call it a u second derivative t or u second derivative x plus say some a times u prime of x plus some b times u of x suppose i want this to be equal to some f okay so suppose you want to solve the ordinary ordinary differential equation so what you do is you look for a function which is twice differentiable okay and then you see whether this is going to be satisfied okay we can define we can define a distribution solution of this equation distribution solution of this equation of this equation this equation okay that means that is you take a t which is a distribution distribution okay then once t is the t is infinitely many times differentiable okay then you can find the in my notation d square t by dx square okay then plus a times a distribution can be multiplied with a constant okay so i have not told that but you can do that dx plus another times b times t of x you see two linear functionals can be added so these distributions can be added so this is a linear functional then you can see whether this is going to be f f is if this was a function there is a corresponding distribution called lambda f okay so t is going to be a solution if it satisfies this and this is equivalently okay this implies you take this distribution that is d square t by dx square plus a times dt by dx plus b times t this acting on phi that should be is equal to lambda f of phi okay the question is can you find something like that this holds for all phi okay then it is going to be a distribution solution now if you and uh, the expand this definition for example d square t by dx square this is equivalent to you know that it is t acting on phi second derivative minus a times t acting on phi prime plus b times t acting on phi that is going to be equal to integral over f into phi this has to be true for all phi in C C infinity of wherever space you are talking about R or A B or wherever be it. Okay. So what I am trying to say is that instead of functions, you can look for uh, sol solutions uh, as distributions. Okay. So this way, for example, I don't have the time. Otherwise, I could have shown you. I started with a partial differential equation, the uh, old uh, transport equation. Then I there I, I I was telling you that if that initial condition f if it was continuous, then you cannot have a you cannot interpret as a solution in the classical sense. But now if that you can that u which I defined u of x t is equal to f of x minus t. If I interpret as a distribution, then you can actually show that it is a solution in the sense of distributions. Okay, so that is one way of doing it. And there are other use of distributions, like for example, you see, you must have learned how to solve some of the differential equations. But the number of equations which you can solve explicitly are very few. And almost most, almost all the differential equations you cannot solve it explicitly. Okay. So in that case, you need different mathematics to solve it. So one way to do is that, you see, if you want to find a solution, sometimes what do you do is, we try to find as a solution in a general sense. It is like, for example, if you are trying to find a quantity in a small set, it may be difficult. So maybe then you try to find the solution in a larger set. There may be it's easy to search. 
so it's like instead of looking for someone in your college you look for whether he is going to be in the entire district okay then once you if you can find that then you try to see whether that fellow is in the anywhere in the district or in the your college in the same way you try to find a distribution solution and then after that you try to see whether this distribution is actually going to be given by a function and there is a two types of the theories one is called the finding a weak solution that is like uh, finding a distribution solution and then after once you catch a distribution solution try to see whether they are indeed going to be a classical solution these are known as what is known as the regularity theory okay and uh, there is a very famous equation called the navier stokes equation okay and uh, there is a well, well known problem okay and this equation is a million dollar problem we still don't know whether that problem has a solution okay of course there are we know that there are solutions like what is known as weak solution but we are unable to establish whether it is given by a smooth function and so on so that is the use of uh, distributions in solving the equation maybe i will stop here and if you have any questions i will be happy to answer uh, so i have one more question in the remarks yeah. you have mentioned that uh, this uh, distribution uh, uh, it's a continuous linear function. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so before that, you gave one uh, definition of that, right? So how yeah. can we connect these two things? No, no. Which, which one? Can you repeat? Uh, can you go back a little? Uh, the remark. Here. Uh, yeah. There. There. Uh -huh. uh, there. You have mentioned it as a distribution. Uh, is a linear map, right? That yeah. Map. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but. Uh, um, it, this just in your map, it satisfies all those estimates. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. It is not any arbitrary linear map. It satisfies an estimate. I can uh, write it here. Okay. It's a, a distribution. Omega is a subset of Rn. Okay. And then T is a distribution. Then T is from CC infinity of Omega to R. Okay. You can even take complex value, so it's okay. T is so such that T is linear, linear, and then T will satisfy the estimate for every compact, compact set K, subset of omega. Then you will have there exist an M in n union zero and a constant c greater than zero such that modulus of t of v should be less than or equal to constant time sigma i is equal to zero to m i will write here maybe d alpha v the supremum supremum okay and where I'll, d alpha i means the derivatives of order some alpha so there are some generalized notion. This means you can estimate it with uh, all partial derivatives of order up to m. Okay? So I have not introduced these definitions. Okay? And uh, it's, it's just that. Okay? So the, such quantities are called the distributions. Okay? Linearity is there. This is the uh, quantity estimate for what is known as the um, uh, continuity part of that linear map. In fact, there is a topology here. With respect to that, it becomes a topological vector space. And then uh, this condition actually tells you that T is continuous with respect to that uh, to vector topology. Yeah. Uh, for this, particularly, we are defining a topology? Yeah, there is a very specific topology, and there is reasons for that. OK. For example, you need, once you have a distribution, you, you T, I have defined the derivative of T, for example, derivative of T. For example, I want this to be continuous and various things I require. When you put all these things, you will end up with that. Okay, any other question?
Okay, looks like uh, there are no other questions. So maybe uh, thank you for your attention.